All right, guys. Well, 1059 is just insanity, right? I'm losing my mind. I don't know what to believe anymore. Um, I thought Blackbeard was going to go for Pluton, right? I didn't think he was going to go for Boa Hancock's Devil Fruit, right? So let's get into the chapter. This one is a doozy, right? Might be the most... Uh, I keep saying it. Every single week, it's like this is the most epic or most interesting chapter of the year. Oda just keeps on outdoing himself, right? It being the final saga... We're definitely seeing something where he he's taking advantage that hey, we don't gotta keep no more secrets. We don't gotta keep these mysteries going. We gotta start we gotta start unpackaging some of these revelations, right? These are like little precious gifts that Oda has had wrapped up for us for many, many years, and now we're finally able to open up these beautiful presents, right? It's not even Christmas, right? It's freaking August. And we're getting these crazy revelations, right? These crazy uh, mysteries answered. We finally get to see what Blackbeard was chasing after the last year and a half, two years, right? Since that chapter where Blackbeard's like, uh, if the Marines want it, we better take it ourselves. <laughs> With his missing teeth and everything. But anyway, let's get into the chapter, guys. We're going to do a quick review, a quick little breakdown of this. We're going to make it nice and fun, right? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, we got a lot of future One Piece content. I did a few theory videos recently. Go check those out. If you haven't yet, don't forget to drop a like uh, and, and drop a comment too. I love reading your comments. I actually did a response to a few comments, um, but I would love to see more, right? I always want to see more. Anyway, let's get into it. The cover page, the cover story. We got uh, chapter 1059, the Captain Kobe incident, right? Very interesting title. Uh, we will see why uh, soon enough. Uh, so we got uh, Katakuri and Oven knocking each other out, which I find pretty funny because it's obviously Katakuri is gonna is gonna destroy Oven, right? He's gonna like low diff Oven, like no tomorrow. But apparently they're pretty much even because they're on hallucinogens. The effect of Caesar's hallucinogenic gas. Damn, I can't believe it's already been 18 chapters of German 66's Cold Blooded Voyage. That's pretty nuts when you think about it, because that's like. That's almost half a year's worth of One Piece chapters uh, to this voyage. So hopefully we got a big payoff, right? I've said it on many uh, videos now that I, I am expecting this to have a big payoff. Um, but we will see, right? My last theory was that that Blackbeard's crew was on the island, right? And there still might be some truth to it because as we see later in this chapter, um, Blackbeard takes a couple of his uh, crew crewmates. I think uh, Basco shot. I think his name is, and uh, Katarina Devon. So there is still a chance that we do have some of Blackbeard's crew here on the island, but we'll get into that soon enough. Anyway, uh, looks like Caesar Gastino uh, saved the day, and Jorma 66 is going to escape, right? I see, like, a little opening on the ceiling there. Like, maybe they escaped through the ceiling. Um, but, yeah, it looks like uh, Gastino's gas is S-tier, right? It managed to low diff. Uh, these commanders. All right, let's get into the chapter, guys. So uh, they're nearing Sphinx, right? Uh, Marco is with Shanks's crew, right? We don't get to see Shanks's crew's face except for uh, Lucky Rue. Pretty interesting. I wonder why. I guess they didn't want them to be too much of a focus. They just wanted to kind of touch up on that. I do like the fact, though, that like Marco can fly, right? Like he can fly. I'm pretty sure he can fly like a pretty long distance right i wonder if it takes up a lot of stamina to be in like his phoenix form because they, like he needed a ride right i'm guessing there's more to it maybe he had some information to share with shanks that he wanted him to know maybe he was uh filling in shanks on what on what happened in wano right because there honestly there is no way to truly know if shanks knows all the details so maybe uh, most likely marco filled him in on what happened in wano and everything with luffy and uh, now Shanks and his crew are up to speed with, with all the things that went down in Wano. Uh, next, we get a little flashback, right? We get a little flashback of, of Yamato explaining why she's staying in Wano, which we, I think a lot of people pretty much assumed, right? Um, I think it's to protect Momonosuke and Wano. As we saw, uh, Green Bull came and almost no-diffed the entire country. So we need somebody like Yamato, somebody that's kind of like in that first Yonko commander, maybe even low admiral, right? Low admiral tier, maybe. I don't know. That's kind of where I put her on. I put her in between like high first Yonko commander, low, low admiral tier, something like that. 
um, maybe mid, right? Because the Admirals lately, they haven't been looking as OP as we once thought, right? Luffy overall, he's pretty cool with it because he's like, hey, you know what? I guess you got to point Yamato. It would be a load off my mind if you were to stay, right? He doesn't have to worry about Wano and Momonosuke because he knows Yamato's strong enough to defend the island. And then, uh, you know, Marco has some sweet words for Luffy. He says that Ace would be very proud of him. And Luffy, Luffy has a, you know, this beautiful Luffy smile, right? His big, big bright smile. We get a little flashback of when Marco uh, was talking to Sanji and Zoro. He says, the times belong to you guys now. Stay strong. So basically, like, the, these are the guys who are going to bring forth the new era. And by the guys, obviously, I mean the Straw Hats, right? All right, then we transition over to Amazon Lily which is where the chapter truly just goes ballistic, right? It goes insanity, goes uh, triple S tier, right? So we got, uh, wow, this, this is gonna be nuts. This is gonna be nuts. Um, so we got the Island of Women, Amazon Lily, right? Looks like it's been, the mountain's been sliced in half, right? Who could have done that? Looks like something uh, Mihawk would do or something, right? Did Mihawk come to the Island of Amazon Lily? Why is there a giant slash on the mountain? This has to be some, some god level swordsman, right? What is this? What's going on? Anyway, we get we get Boa Hancock. She's like, uh, there's so many Marines. Maybe I should go and marry Luffy, right? Maybe that's the only solution. We got the grandma. She's like, you always think that, Boa. Yo, that's your solution to everything, Boa Hancock. Marrying Luffy. That is not the solution to all of your problems. Marriage is not never the solution, Boa. A few weeks prior. All right, we got a flashback. Okay, so that was the present. Now we're getting the flashback. We're gonna get. We're gonna see what actually happened. Wow, look at how the mountain looked before. It had like the big heart shape, the tower with the with all the snakes. Now there's only one snake. Wow, that's nuts. They really messed that place up. We got Vice Admiral Yamakaji, right? I wonder what his bounty is. Probably like 200 million tops. Get ready to record what happens, Roger. All right, so we got the the Kuja pirates, right? Uh, who is that? I can't fight a child. Is it that? Oh, okay, so here we go. Look at the star-shaped eye. You got the bangs. When I first saw her, I thought it was like a clone of Nico Robin, right? But we learn soon enough that this is actually some kind of child clone of Bo Hancock, which is pretty nuts. We can see her earrings a little bit in this little panel where she gets revealed, and it's like a little girl shooting a beam out of her hand. Like the old pacifistas, right? The new pacifistas, uh, according to Yamakaji, they're called the Seraphims. Uh, they should be on the front line. So it looks like they're they're resorting to that. They're like, you know what? Let's not waste our manpower. Let's not waste human lives. Let's send these these cyborgs, right? Maybe they're cyborgs. Maybe they're maybe they're more um, they're more organic, right? Like cell, like organic androids. I wouldn't be surprised. What if they have like emotions and feelings and maybe uh, one of them joins the Straw Hats. You never know. Maybe the Straw Hats get a hold of one of these Seraphims. That would be pretty epic, right? Then we get the goat, right? Emperor Blackbeard arrives and uses his Quake Quake fruit to create a giant sea quake, you know, creating absolute chaos like he always does. Every time Blackbeard is, in, is involved, there is chaos, right? Chaos ensues and I absolutely love that. Um, we get the Zeta <laughs> Muiwara! Terrible impression. I've come for the Pirate Empress. I won't let a power like hers fall into the Navy's clutches. I do wonder what Blackbeard plans to do with that fruit, right? Because he's obviously, he's not the most handsome pirate, right? So can he truly utilize the, I think it's called the Mera Mera? I, I believe so. It might be. It might, it might be wrong. But it, it, the love, love fruit that Boa has. Can he truly utilize that power up to the best of his, the best, you know, advantage? Because he doesn't really. And looking at his crew, he doesn't really have anybody too, you know, good looking, right? Everybody kind of looks like a like a freak, you know. No offense to anybody who, who's who's freaky looking, but his crew is kind of composed of a bunch of really strange and grotesque looking people for the most part, right? Uh, including himself, right? Blackbeard's not not a you know uh, Calvin Klein model, right? We got Blackbeard here creating, just breaking reality, right? Just cracking the sky. I you love to see it. Then we cut to uh, Kobe, Captain Kobe. So he's telling Bo Hancock, Bo Hancock, you need to surrender. We promise we'll leave immediately. We don't want any more casualties. We need to get out of here. And then you know Bo Hancock 
that girl's got conquerors hockey. She's like, I will never submit to another's captivity. Never again, right? So she, we know she's not surrendering. Boa Hancock's about to go fight Kobe. And then we cut back to Blackbeard. This chapter's just nuts, right? This chapter's just insanity. So we, we cut back to Blackbeard and his crew, and his crew just got low diffed by a little kid, right? So wait, you're kidding me. White hair, brown skin, and black wings? Lunarian, right? This is what we're, we're led to believe. This could be a Lunarian. So he, he knows about the Lunarian. So he's freaking out. He's like, what is going on? You guys aren't serious. This kid took all of you down by himself. And it's a little kid holding a giant sword. That's Mihawk, right? That's like a clone of Mihawk fused with um, King. King uh, Kaido's commander, right? Abner, Albert. I think it's Albert, right? That's, that's like a fusion of both of them, right? Because he, he has the brown skin, the white hair, the black wings of King, but he kind of has like Mihawk's demeanor and even the way he's holding that giant sword, we even seen what Mihawk would look like if he was a child. So this, this is definitely a clone of Mihawk and look at how he has emotion on his face, right? I don't think a lot of people are gonna be talking about that. Um, but you notice that he does have some emotion, like some anger on his face, where like the pacifistas, the ones that were clones of Kuma, they were just soulless, right? They didn't have no no emotions. They were just like mindless killers. But here we got this Mihawk guy. He's he's got some emotion on his face. Like he's angry. He's 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 ready to slash Blackbeard in half. But anyway, what I was getting at is that maybe these clones aren't a hundred percent robotic underneath like uh, the Kuma clones were, right? Maybe these are a little bit more organic. Maybe these are like actual child soldiers, right? Um, and maybe that'll be the downfall of the Marines. Maybe some of them uh, will grow some positive emotions towards the Straw Hats or some good pirates, right? We'll, we'll see. But that leaves them open for some, some crazy twists later down the line, right? I wouldn't be surprised if uh, they made clones of all the warlords, right? We already got Boa Hancock. We got Dracul Mihawk. We might see uh, some other clones, right? We might see a clone of Doflamingo. And Blackbeard's like freaking out. Don't tell me he's a pacifista. And then this dude just slashes the entire mountain uh, pretty much in half, which is ridiculous. A crazy power feat. Damn it, a pacifista brat. What the hell is going on? Blackbeard's freaking out. It looks like he, he has learned armament hockey, right? Because we've never actually seen him use armament hockey. We see his arm turn black there. So that's pretty cool. At least we got confirmation that he can use hockey. It'd be pretty pathetic being an emperor and having no use of hockey, right? That'd be pretty whack. So at least we got confirmation on that. This part's a little bit confusing because we got Blackbeard. This is huge. What does he mean by that? This is huge, like the power output. Blackbeard's like feeling this kid's power too. This guy's a beast. And then all of a sudden he uses black hole. So I feel like there was a weird cut. Like we definitely missed something. Something happened there that I, off screen that I wish we would have seen. But anyway, uh, he uses black hole. I don't see uh, the little Mihawk kid anywhere. So he might've gotten sucked into it. Then we get Boa using slave arrow. So she's just turning everybody into statues. Everybody's obsessed with her. Everybody thinks she's super hot, right? Hey, pacifista, stop that. You'll smash the people who've been turned into stone. Stop right now, that's an order. So is he talking to the little Mihawk one? Because there's a Mihawk pacifista and there's a Boa Hancock pacifista, so we know that. And we got <laughs> Snake Princess. Why do I sound like an Italian chef? Uh, she can't use her powers. Get your filthy hands off of me. So we got Blackbeard choking out Boa Hancock and we also get their bounties revealed. We see that Boa Hancock's bounty is 1.659 billion, uh, high first Yonko commander level, right? Um, obviously she gets a little bit more because uh, she has a, a, you know, a huge force behind her, the Kuja pirates. Um, you know, she has a whole island slash country's uh, battle power. I think that pretty much proves she's at least first Yonko commander level. Uh, personal strength wise. I love that we also see Katarina Devon and Vasco shot like just like absolutely you know in awe of Boa Hancock's beauty. They turn to statues too. I find that so funny. I see they don't call you Empress for nothing. Blackbeard. Emperor Blackbeard bounty 3.996 billion. 
that is fair. I love that they gave him a bounty increase because it, I made a whole video about it, which now, yeah, you should still watch it, right? Because I still think um, there's potential for my theory to happen. It's a Blackbeard video. Um, but now it's kind of like, because the whole point of the video was that he needed to increase his bounty and now it kind of just increased overnight, right? Maybe something happened off screen, but I hope we get to see why his bounty increased because last time we saw it, it was somewhere around 2.3 billion and now it just jumped to like 4 billion pretty much. So, uh, you know, interesting, um, interesting choice off screen, uh, bounty increase, I guess, but, uh, hopefully we'll find out why. Um, I've had my eye on your power for quite a while. And then Boa says exactly what I was thinking. What my beauty is what makes this power formidable. If you kill me, all your little friends will remain statues forever. Whoever inherits my power won't be able to release them. So then we got Kobe. He's like, I knew it. Boa Hancock is far trickier than anyone expected. What do I do? Everyone's been turned to stone. Every, pretty much everybody on the islands it, it was turned to stone now. Something I didn't notice upon my first reading of the chapter is that we do see a giant Luffy poster uh, in the background in the castle, which is pretty nuts. I wonder why we see that. Oh, look, and then look at this. Seems like we're now Blackbeard's talking to Kobe. So now we're kind of at a standstill, right? Because everybody's a statue. The only ones that seem to be okay is Kobe, Boa Hancock, and Blackbeard, which personally, I feel like Kobe and Boa Hancock could probably put up a decent fight against Blackbeard. We all know that Kobe doesn't have a devil fruit, so I think they'd be a pretty decent combo, but let's see what happens. So uh, Blackbeard's like, we're, it seems like we're, we're at a bit of an impasse, doesn't it, Hero? You did me a favor at Rocky Port that made it possible for me to oust Ochoku and become the boss of Pirate Island. So Ochoku, if I'm not mistaken, was one of the Rocks Pirates as well. I think he was the big guy with the golden armor. If I unhand the woman, do you reckon she'd play nice and change everyone back to normal? It'd be a headache for me if she didn't restore the Marines. I'll do it if you two get off my island. You know, I just don't buy it. The way I see it, if I let go, you just turn us to stone, right? I honestly don't think any man can resist your charms. All right, so we just got confirmation that Blackbeard um, is straight. Uh, this is a real head scratcher, but I guess I gotta kill ya. Please wait, don't throw all those lives away. So Blackbeard's just ready to, he wants that smoke. He's like, you know what? I'll, I'll let my, my two crew members die. It's okay, I, I'd rather not risk it. So Blackbeard, he's still a savage, right? He's still a savage. The complete opposite of Luffy, right? If we know, if we saw Luffy in this situation, obviously he would not, um, he would not do something like that. I knew the Navy would lay siege to the island but I didn't think the terrain here would get this devastated. Oof. We got Silver's mother frickin' Rayleigh. This is insane. Sorry I'm late, Hancock. Dark King Rayleigh. Oh my god. Whitebeard's old apprentice, huh? I know it's immature to admit this, but I really don't like you. Oof. Oh, everyone's losing their mind. Teaches poop in his pants. We got uh, Kobe just losing it. I love when his eyes poke out of his head. It's like he unlocked year fifth, right? Uh, and then we got uh, Boa Hancock just like, my hero, Rayleigh. Um, Rayleigh tells everybody to, you know, Rayleigh is there to de-escalate the situation. He's like, everybody get out of here or you gotta fight me. Pretty much very similar to what happened in Marine Ford with Shanks and Kobe, right? Kobe stood his ground. He, he was up against a powerhouse and then, you know, Shanks comes, opposite happens here, Rayleigh comes to town and stops the war, right? Stops this big battle that's going on. It looks like Blackbeard respected Rayleigh's power, uh, Rayleigh's name, and they decide to leave. Present day. So now we're, we're back to the present and we learn that Shocky, Rayleigh's girl, used to be the queen of Amazon Lily, which I think there were a lot of theories about that before. There's also a lot of theories that uh, him and that him and her had a child, Rayleigh and Shaki, and that child is Dracul Mihawk, which would be insane if that is also the case. But now the fact that I feel like it'd be weird if, if both of them were true, right? I think this one is true, now confirmed, but I, now I'm starting to believe that that probably isn't the case. I don't think Mihawk's parents are Rayleigh and Shaki now, just because it'd be weird if she had like two big revelations, right? But who knows? We'll see. So Rayleigh saved Boa Hancock. I love how she's literally like knee, like she's all over Rayleigh. I, I really hope she's not, you know, 
you better stay loyal to Luffy, uh, Boa. I feel like Rayleigh's always over there. I feel like Rayleigh's like her side dude, right? Like whenever she's bored, but like she still loves Luffy, but Rayleigh's like her side bro. Imagine that. Uh, to be frank, we got lucky. Circumstances allowed me to resolve things with my reputation alone. I've got an old. I'm pretty certain I wouldn't win a fight against Blackbeard head on these days. So at least we got confirmation um, of that, right? From the sound of it, the Navy are looking to replace the seven warlords with those new weapons. Those two didn't even have a single scratch on them. After all that happened, those pacifistas were so OP they didn't have a scratch on them. That's nuts. It was bizarre. One of them looked just like you when you were a kid, big sis. Oof. We got the little Boa Hancock and she has stars for eyes. That might have something to do with the five elder stars, right? We might see that come into play later. But look at how they smile, right? Like they have a very mischievous look to them, which makes me believe that they have some AI features in them where I feel like the pacifistas were just robotic cyborg slaves, right? I think these have feelings and emotions and I feel like that's gonna be a huge, huge factor uh, later on and we're gonna see a lot of twists come from this, right? I truly believe that one of them is gonna leave the Marines and side with the Straw Hats maybe. Maybe, maybe Frankie plays a big role in that and like they capture one and they rewire their brain and now the Straw Hats have a pacifista um, and it's like a little kid, right? And like an overpowered little kid. I think that would be a freaking sick crew member, right? And like we all, we already know they're super OP, right? So we want, we didn't get Yamato, but maybe we get an overpowered little kid cyborg uh, to join the crew, which would be freaking epic, right? And then the end of the chapter, uh, yes, we'll be docking at Egghead Port soon. That looks like a Marine ship regarding the kidnapping of Captain Kobe. Yeah, Captain Kobe, the hero of the Rocky Port incident, has been abducted by one of the four emperors, Blackbeard. His current status is unknown. No break next week, so we got seven more days. We'll find out what happened to Kobe, or we'll, we'll see what happens, right? But this was an amazing chapter. Mind-blowing, right? This review went a little longer than my usual ones do, but holy hell, amazing chapter, guys. This was awesome. Uh, I can't wait to see what happens next. And uh, stay tuned for more, guys. Much more One Piece uh, content coming at you soon. Don't forget to subscribe. Drop a like. Drop a comment. More videos coming soon. Peace out. <laughs>